Good morning, my brothers and sisters. Welcome once again to our online service. The Lord be with you. And also with you. I was glad when they said unto me, Let us go to the house of the Lord. Oh, come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the Almighty Savior. God is spirit. We must worship Him in spirit and in truth. Glory to God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Praise the Lord now and forever. Amen. Let us come before the Lord and we say the collect for purity together. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Collect for Trinity 19. Let's pray together. Almighty God, your Son has opened for us a new and living way into your presence. Give us pure hearts and steadfast wills to worship you in spirit and in truth. Through the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Today, the first reading is taken from 2 Timothy. Chapter 4, verse 5 to 17. As for you, always be sober-minded, endure suffering, do the work of an evangelist, fulfill your ministry. For I am already being poured out as a drink offering, and the time of my departure has come. I have fought the good fight, I have finished the race, I have kept the faith. Henceforth, there is laid up for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord the righteous judge will award to me on that day, and not only to me, 
but also to all who have loved his appearing. Do your best to come to me soon, for Demas, in love with this present world, has deserted me and gone to Thessalonica. Crescens has gone to Galatia, Titus to Dementia. Luke alone is with me. Get Mark and bring him with you, for he is very useful to me for ministry. Tychicus I have sent to Ephesus. When you come, bring the cloak that I left with couples at Troas. Also the books and above all the parchments. Alexander, the coppersmith, did me great harm. The Lord will repay him according to his deeds. Beware of him yourself, for he strongly opposed our message. At my first defense, no one came to stand by me, but all deserted me. May it not be charged against them. But the Lord stood by me and strengthened me, so that through me the message might be fully proclaimed and all the Gentiles might hear it. So I was rescued from the lion's mouth. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke chapter 10, verses 1 to 9. Glory to you, Lord Jesus. After this, the Lord appointed 72 others and sent them two by two ahead of him to every town and place where he was about to go. He told them, The harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore, to send out workers into his harvest field. Go, I am sending you out like lambs among wolves. Do not take a purse or bag or sandals, and do not greet anyone on the road. When you enter a house, first say, Peace to this house. If someone who promotes peace is there, your peace will rest on them. If not, it will return to you. Stay there, eating and drinking whatever they give you, for the worker deserves his wages. Do not move around from house to house. When you enter a town and are welcome, eat what is offered to you. Heal the sick who are there and tell them, the kingdom of God has come near to you. This is the gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus. Very good morning, brothers and sisters in Christ. The Lord be with you. Let us come to the Lord in prayer before we listen to the preaching of God's Word. Gracious Heavenly Father, we come to you in the mighty name of Jesus, the name above all names, the name that enables us to come before your throne of grace. We lift up our hearts we thank you, for you are our good God. We thank you for your loving kindness towards us. We thank you for the gift of a new day, that we can continue to live for you and to serve you. We thank you for the freedom that we have to worship you in this land. And as we listen to the preaching of your word, we pray, Father, that you may help us to listen with understanding. Let our hearts be open wide to receive your word. And change our hearts and our whole life so that we can be the very persons you want us to be for your own glory. Speak to us, O Lord, and we are ready to receive your word. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, our nation and the world at large has been wrestling with the dangers and threats of the unprecedented COVID-19 pandemic for about eight to nine months now. This pandemic has massive impacts 
on human lives. Economy, social life, and even our worship, causing fears, worries, and uncertainties. We don't know when COVID-19 pandemic will end. For such a time like this, you may wonder and ask God, how long, Lord, will you let COVID-19 to cause fear, worry, and uncertainty in my life? How long, Lord, will you not answer my prayer? Whatever situation you are going through right now, I want to encourage you by the, this fact. You are not alone. Even David, a man after God's own heart, went through many great problems and pains in his life, as we can see in Psalms 13. Let me read Psalms 13. How long, Lord, will you forget me forever? How long will you hide your face from me? How long must I wrestle with my thoughts and day after day have sorrow in my heart? How long will my enemy triumph over me? Look on me and answer, Lord my God. Give light to my eyes or I will sleep in death. And my enemy will say, I've overcome him. And my foes will rejoice when I fall. But I trust in your unfailing love. My heart rejoices in your salvation. I will sing to the Lord's praise, for he has been good to me. Let me share briefly with you three points from Psalms 13. And all these three points begin with the letter P. The first one is what I call problem. God's distance in the face of enemies' prominence resulted in a lot of inner turmoil for David. And here we see David's God seemed distant, too far. We see here in verse 1, How long, Lord, will you forget me forever? How long will you hide your face from me? This is the experience of David. He went through this agony, pain, or problems in his life. He feels that God seemed to be distant, far away from him. And he says, how long, Lord, will you forget me forever? How long will you hide your face from me? God seems to be very far from him. And sometimes, we are like David. Sometimes we think that God seems to too far from us. God seems distant from us. And like David, sometimes we cry unto the Lord, How long, Lord, will you forget me forever? How long, Lord, will you hide your face from me? And this is the reality of David. He feels that God seems distant. Secondly, here we see David himself was in turmoil. In verse 2, How long must I wrestle with my thoughts and day after day have sorrow in my heart? You see, David himself was in turmoil. How long must I wrestle with my thoughts and day after day have sorrow in my heart? I want you to put yourself in David's shoe. 
How long must I wrestle with my thoughts and day after day have sorrow in my heart? David was in agony. David was in turmoil. David was in, in pain. Thirdly, David's enemies seem to be winning. As we can see in verse 2, the last part of verse 2, David says, How long will my enemy triumph over me? This is something that David himself could not accept. Because everybody knew that he was a good fighter. He fought against Goliath and he defeated Goliath. But now, David's enemies seem to be winning over him. How could he accept that? Just like you and I, David was going through a problem in his life. This leads me to my second point. Brothers and sisters in Christ, do you know why many Christians do not grow to maturity and why they are not used by God in a mighty way? I believe it is because when God seems distant, they do not call out to Him. Instead, they just give up and go back into the world. David did not do that. When God seemed distant, he called on him to answer him. As we can see in verse 3 and 4. Look on me in answer. Lord my God, give light to my eyes. Or I will sleep in death. And my enemy will say I have overcome him. And my force will rejoice when I fall. This is the very thing that you and I need to do when we are going through problems in our life. Running to the Lord to pray to Him and eagerly wait for His salvation, for His help. My final point is praise. David has not yet been delivered, but he trusts in the unfailing love of God. And a calm assurance comes from him. His heart is filled with joy as he thinks of the deliverance which God will bring about. By faith, David counts God's future deliverance as past and says, I will sing the Lord's praise for He has been good to me. Brothers and sisters in Christ, I want you to close your eyes for a moment and think of your situation right now. You may be facing financial problem due to employment problem. Your business may be experiencing huge loss and on the verge of closing down. You may be going through unresolved family problems. You may be suffering from a terminal illness. Whatever dry spell you are going through in your life right now, be like David. Pour your heart to the Lord. He knows and understands the cry from the depths of your heart. Come to the Lord in prayer, trusting in His unfailing love. Praise the Lord as you await for His deliverance or salvation. It is interesting to note that Psalms 13 begins with a rather a gloomy note, but ends with joyful note. David in verse 6 says, I will sing to the Lord's praise, for He has been good to me. Think of this. I will sing to the Lord's praise, 
for He has been good to me in spite of the problem that He was going through. He sing praises to the Lord. I will sing to the Lord's praise. Why? For He has been good to me. God is good all the time. Indeed, all the time, God is good. The Bible tells us that the steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. And therefore, we can put our trust in the unfailing love of God that never ends. Let us end by singing this song. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. Jesus, Heavenly Father, we thank you that you are our good God who knows us and understands us. You know the problem that we are going through right now. You know the fear, the worries, and the uncertainties in our hearts. But we thank you that we are not alone because we see in your word, even David, a man after your own heart, also went through problems, pain in his life. But he put his trust in your unfailing love. He came to you to pray. He came to you seeking your help. And as he await for your help, for your salvation, he praises you in the midst of the problem. In the midst of trouble, he praises your name. 
Help us, Lord, to be like David today. That no matter what situation that we are in right now, especially as we are wrestling with the dangers and threats of COVID-19 pandemic. Help us, Lord, to come to you and putting our trust in your unfailing love because we believe that in your own perfect time, you will extend your hand to help us, to protect us, to deliver us from all harm. So Father, help us to learn to praise your name in whatever circumstances that we are in, to give thanks to you in whatever circumstances. Because you have said in your word that it is your will, O oh Lord, that we are to give thanks to you. So thank you, Lord Jesus. We praise you. We worship you. We glorify your holy name. And Father, I want to pray for my brothers and sisters following this online service. Wherever they are, I pray, Father, for your special favor and blessing upon each and every one of them. Those who are sick, I pray for your healing power be upon them. Those who are in needs, Father, we pray that you will supply their daily needs. Those who are in sorrow, fill your hearts with your peace. And Father, I want to pray for your special protection upon them and upon their families. Protect them, Lord, especially from the COVID-19 pandemic. And let the peace of the Lord with pass, which passes all understanding fill their heart, even right now. And the joy of the Lord, which is our strength, also fill their heart. So Father, we want to thank you for your word we have received. Help us, Lord, to glorify your name, to praise your name in all circumstances. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you for speaking to us through your word. Let your word dwell in our hearts. And help us, Lord, to live by your word. In the mighty name of Jesus, our Lord, we pray. Amen. After hearing the word of God, let us come before the Lord to affirm our faith by saying the Nicene Creed together. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, one in being with the Father, through Him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, He came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, He was born of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, He was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered, died, and was buried. On the third day, He rose again in fulfillment of the Scriptures. He ascended to heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and His kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified. He is spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, I acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Shalom to beloved CLGS member. We want to welcome our Archbishop Dato Malta Jikitais in our online service today. Thank you for the encouragement. He who have years to hear, let him hear. Praise the Lord. I have a good news to all of you that Canon James Lee
have discharged from the quarantine center and now he is in his rectory for rest. However, all visitors are not allowed to meet him. Visit him in spirit through our prayer. The church is currently closed until October 25th. Any emergency, please contact Padotin or Pastor Ching Nyuk Len or Pastor Wong Hensa. A call to prayer by Archbishop Dato Malta Dikitais as the head of the province of the South Anglican Church in Southeast Asia every day at 12 p.m. to 12.15 p.m. We pray for four things. Firstly, God divine intervention. Second, we pray for the frontliner. The thirdly, we pray for the relevant government ministry or department uh, dealing with the pandemic. And the fourthly, we pray for God miraculously healing on all COVID-19 patients. Come, God's people, we pray 15 minutes every day, united in prayer. Finally, my God is my rock, my fortress, my deliverer, and my savior. God bless you all. Father in heaven, for our world, we would like to pray for Armenia, a country of 3.2 million people who are predominantly Christians and where unemployment and poverty remains widespread. We pray for good Christian leadership, political stability, and good governance in the country. We also pray for a quick and peaceful end to the current conflict with neighboring Azerbaijan and the safety of civilians affected by this conflict. For our nation, we would like to pray for our cabinet ministers and all politically elected leaders to be dedicated in serving the people. We pray for continued peace in our culturally diverse society. We pray for a greater discipline in our local communities in order to control the spread of COVID-19. We also give thanks for the successful and peaceful conclusion of the recent Sabah state elections. For diocese, we would like to pray for our Archbishop Datuk Melta and all members of the clergy that you keep them safe in these uncertain times so that they may continue to serve. We pray for the members of all churches, both rural and urban, that they remain faithful and committed despite the stop in church gatherings. For our parish, the Church of Good Shepherd, we pray that you continue to provide encouragement and inspiration to all group leaders and their members so they remain committed in fellowship even as we discontinue church gatherings and services. We thank you that by your grace, Canon James Lee has made a quick recovery from COVID. We pray that he remains safe in quarantine and the church will return to normal again through his continued leadership. For those who are sick, we pray for your mercy and that your power of healing and recovery be upon them. We also pray for the strength and patience for those caring for the sick. We pray this all in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. The Bible says, God so loved the world that He gave His only Son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins, to be our advocate in heaven, and to bring us to eternal life. Let us therefore confess our sins in penitence and faith firmly resolve to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace with all men. Let us say the confession together. Merciful God, our Heavenly Father, our Maker and our Judge, we have sinned against you and against our fellow men in thought, word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate thought. We repent and are truly sorry for our sins for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us. Father, forgive us. Strengthen us to love and obey you in newness of life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you and deliver you from all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you for his service by the power of the Holy Spirit, and keep you in eternal life. Amen. 
Now that we have been put right with God through faith in Jesus Christ, we have peace with God, so we must make peace with one another in the body of Christ. The peace of the Lord be always with you and also with you. Let us greet each other with the peace. All glory to you, our Heavenly Father, for in your tender mercy, you gave your Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption. He made your full atonement for the sins of the whole world, offering once for all his one perfect sacrifice of himself. He instituted and in his holy gospel, commanded us to continue perpetual memory of his precious death until he comes again. Hear us, merciful Father, we humbly pray and grant that by the power of the Holy Spirit, we who receive these gifts of bread and wine, according to your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and suffering, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood. Who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread, and gave thanks, he broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take it, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way of the supper, he took the cup and gave thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Christ has died, Christ has risen, Christ will come again. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body because we all share in one bread. Blessed are those who are invited to the feast of the Lamb. Let us rejoice and give glory to God. The gifts of God for the people of God, drawn in with faith and humbly receive this bread and wine, in remembrance that Christ died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Amen. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ keep you in eternal life. Amen. You may now share or distribute the elements of the Holy Communion to the members of your family.
us pray as our Saviour taught us. Together we say, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins. As we forgive those who sin against us, do not bring us to a time of trial, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of His Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace and serve the Lord in the name of Christ. Amen.